Imagine waking up tomorrow with no memory of your past, with only the clothes on your back and a marking on your... Okay, who the f Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a game that literally throws you on the ground from the start. Thankfully, Mr. Sidorovich here offers to help you out a little as long as you repay your debts. And... Lannister always Don't pays. say it. Don't say it. If you don't, well, we all see how this story could have ended. For some background here, I played this game. Vanilla, hardest difficulty, you know, because old man pride, what we used to do back in the day. A dozen or so deaths fighting bandits. Later, I pretty much just knocked it down a level and I feel like that made it harder, honestly. I wanted to enjoy the game, not just the pain it inflicted on me, a little bit of the jank, um, but it literally felt like it changed nothing. I feel like the enemies were honestly tankier than they were on the hardest difficulty. So anyways, I carried on. I played a lot smarter, I slowed down. Every time I peaked, I peaked with meaning. If this game taught me nothing else, you play this game the stalker way. Not like your Master Chief, not like your Doom Slayer, not like your Kratos, not like your any other fantasy power trip that you've played on the market in the last several years. It's gritty, it's unforgiving. Everyone and everything in this game wants you dead. The more I played, the more engrossed I became in this world the devs created. The anxiety-inducing cramped dungeons made me fight tooth and nail. And I mean, I mean running from invisible monsters to fighting every AI I could see just to live and then looting their bodies for bandages. It, it, it's, it's crazy to get out of some of these only to get back out to the exclusion zone and be greeted by gas mask wearing zombies and pseudo dogs and more bandits and more bandits and monolith. But once I used my last few rounds, I managed to escape I head down the road a few meters, then I find some fellow stalkers huddled around a campfire drinking vodka and playing guitar. With a sigh of relief, I crouch down beside them and just sit there taking in the ambience and the melancholy music. What a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, from looting every single body I killed or saw for ammo and bandages and whatever else I could use to survive, to relaxing with these strangers, albeit, you know, NPCs and AI, just relaxing at an overgrown bus stop, taking in the zone. And honestly, that carried me through this game uh, basically, the entire time I played it was just the world, you know? It's a living, breathing, will make you regret every time you don't save before you enter a new area. It's the world. Zone. World. World. The world of Stalker is desolate, but not really empty. It's, I mean, I guess it kind of is empty, but it's bleak. It's monotone. It's grim. It's depressing. But at the same time, it's alive. It's alive! Mutated animals and stalkers roaming the streets. Bandits and military doing patrols. Later in the game, you have these mercs, monoliths, all these different factions, zombies, snorks, roaming in the bushes and, can and corner camping you, honestly, waiting to one tap you and then laugh about it and come teabag you. Oh, cheeky burky. And anomalies, anomalies. Anomalies threw me off so bad when I first started playing. These things will burn you, give you radiation poisoning, and suck your health down faster than you can imagine. They can literally suck you in, spin you around, and then chunk you into oblivion because you either A, ran out of bolts, or B, just weren't using them. All the NPCs have routines, you know, just like the, just like, the military doing patrols, they have routines. They sleep at night. They wake up in the morning, just tell you, Get out of here, stalker. This game is from 2007, and it has a better, you know, I wrote more filled out, but I think it maybe not more filled out, just more lively than most modern Ubisoft games, not including Valhalla, obviously. You know, just sitting in the beginner village in Cordon with my fellow loners as they converse and talk about their journey and making jokes about the zone is oddly satisfying. Even though they're AI and they're not real, even though if I don't know what the hell they're saying, they eat, they drink, they live. Even though this game went through development hell, and you can see, you know, here and there, but you can also see the attention and care that was put into building this grim yet somewhat vivacious world. The year, 2007. I was maybe, you know, a year, a few years into gaming. Well, probably a good bit of years into gaming, to be honest. A year into the Xbox 360. Hadn't learned of the Red Ring of Death yet. I was probably grinding away on Gears of War or Halo 3, and eventually probably Call of Duty. Call of Duty, which arguably revolutionized the FPS genre. Stalker also kind of revolutionized the survival genre, buying several games we see today, like Escape from Tarkov, They're Saying Some Daisy. I mean, shit, the damn Gulag is a mini game in Stalker. Stalker was just so, uh, it's, there's so much in this game that was ahead of its time. Wait, did this guy just say Warzone? 
Yep, there's a side mission where you're basically fighting for your life in a gulag-esque environment against all these different, you know, creatures, stalkers, people for money. There are eight of these you could access based on your level. I think there's eight anyway, depending on your experience as a stalker. If you play this game, you definitely should do it. Just make sure you save when you get done with them. You get a ton of money for beating everyone. But it's also kind of fun, you know, some of these are really, really challenging, especially with the, the jank and the clunk. Every round is an increasingly harder enemy or group of enemies that culminates in a free-for-all with four other kidded. I mean, these dudes are kitted from the ground up, highly experienced stalkers. They'll kill you, you know, no matter the difficulty, pretty quick and can tank quite a few rounds. Playing this game today, you know, you can see the clunk, you can see the bugs, uh, getting shot by AI through walls, uh, the immersion breaking inventory system, which I don't really think ever gets better in this genre. I mean, look at Daisy, you look at Tarkov, it's kind of, the list goes on. You know, there's a big debate I found when I was researching this game on if people think you should play this game with mods or not. I didn't, but you definitely should. I mean, play with mods so you enjoy it. There are plenty of mods, plenty of them that will enhance and make you experience the game better. Uh, some people will tell you to play vanilla, like I did. Feel the pain, feel the true stalker experience. You don't have to. Play the game to enjoy yourself. Play the game to enjoy the story. You know, Stalker 2 is coming out later this year. Get caught up with these. I will say you should play this before Anomaly because this is quite different story-wise from Anomaly. And if you want to experience and learn from the Stalker story, even though we'll touch, we'll, I'll touch a little more about the story in a minute, um, you should play the original trilogy first as I am. This game is set around the infamous Chernobyl power plant. Fantasize there was a second disaster. Crazy, right? After the initial Chernobyl power plant explosion that we all know, there were labs set up all throughout the exclusion zone. Labs were set up all through the exclusion zone to research the disaster. But in doing this, they actually messed up and made it even worse. Uh, these strange anomalies they create, they started to create, and these crazy artifacts started to pop up and appear all around the exclusion zone. It's a pretty wild backstory, and there's actually a pretty good bit of lore if you put a little bit of time into researching it. If it wasn't clear by now, you are a stalker. And oddly enough, you know, there is a meaning to this. It stands for scavenger, trespasser, adventurer, loner, killer, explorer, robber. What a word goulash that is. But you know, if as you play the game, you'll realize it's actually pretty accurate. In the game, stalkers basically wander around the exclusion zone, hanging out, playing guitar, collecting and stealing artifacts, helping doctors in wars with cultists, or even, I guess, becoming a cultist if you wanted to. As glorious as it sounds, the game takes place after a book called Roadside Picnic. What a coincidence. The devs obviously forgot to tell me I was the picnic. I was the feast for all of these failed experiments and twisted people that they put in the zone. The game didn't do a great job of telling me the story, um, which sucks because it's actually a really good one. Half the time I ended up doing, or half the time I was doing side missions, told me more information than some of the main missions, other than a handful of voiceovers and the optional in-game endings, which honestly I've really kind of missed the, the multiple endings or optional endings. I, I kind of wish that they would have more of those, but you know, I guess that's just time wasted because you know, two out of three people won't ever see all those endings. So I was uh, two out of those three people until I was reading, you know, researching, trying to figure out more about the game, more of what the creatures were called, more of what the hell I was doing. Yeah, what I had just spent 20 hours of my life, what the hell I was doing, playing the game. And then of course, when I figured out there was multiple endings, I had to go back and load a save uh, and play back through just to see most of those. I did start a new playthrough to just to see if anything influenced. I don't really think it did. I guess that's just the old man in me going back to try to get every little bit out of the game I could. Um, just like I used to do in the old Halo games, old Gears of War games, you know, going back and finding skulls and cog tag. Overall, GSC Game World built an awesome, horrifying world. It beat me up, kicked me while I was down there, and then dropped a literal nuclear reactor on me. I had a damn good time doing it. I'd love to go back to the zone. Sure, there are bugs, some crazy AI. Um, the graphics are meh, but I'm sure mods could fix that. Um, and there's some other data flaws. Breeding in that radiation while Frank, whoever plays the guitar, and mutated dogs run at me, swearing at them, praying for my life. It was honestly a memorable time, and not something I've experienced, not the feeling I get in a lot of games anymore. It has a great story if you really poke around enough to read about it and find it all out, um, and pay more attention, I guess, when you're playing. Maybe that's part of it is I didn't play, pay quite enough attention to the story. You know, it really sucks me into the soccer universe. Thank you for joining me on my first trip into the exclusion zone. Here's to many more. This is Loner JB. Good night.